with hints, tips and tradey chat. Yeah. Grab yourself a brew because it's about to start. This is Women in Trades with Amy the Sparky. Before the show starts, I just quickly wanted to talk to you about Tradeify. Tradeify is a fast-growing job management platform for all busy tradespeople. It's great for managing all sorts of business admin such as quotes, tracking invoices, timesheets and appointments, leaving you more time to focus on other important things. Tradeify have very kindly given me a discount code for my viewers, so check them out by clicking the link in my show description and using discount code AMY50 to get 50% off. Now, let's crack on with this show. Hello and welcome to um, my podcast, Women in Trades. Today, we have got Kimmy the Sparks from Instagram. Um, hello. I've been Hi. so Hi. excited to talk to you. <laughs> How um how are you doing? Uh, I feel very excited to talk to you as well. Can't wait to share all the crazy stories. <laughs> I can't wait to hear them. <laughs> let's um let's get a little bit of background first. Um, so can you tell me sort of um how w- your route into electric? So your training, how old you were, and all that. Um, I actually got into it after I finished college I started working as an admin for an electrical company okay um so I wanted to go to uni originally to study psychology but then when I was doing the admin work for the electrical company I sort of realized that electrics is quite fun and it's good money for just change of light bulbs because that's what I thought it was (laughs) and um Yeah, and just one day I said, you know what, I'm going to go for it. So I applied for a college. um, But then at the time, what was more suitable for me was one of those evening courses. So I basically paid up front for the whole course. So I think I spent about £6,000. Yeah. So I I paid the sum and I was just doing it all in my own time in the evenings. Um after work on my lunch break and yeah the whole course included everything um so yeah that was how long did that take how long was the course um it took it was supposed to take three to four years um but I'm yeah I managed to do it in about two and a half two years um I managed to get pregnant pregnant as well in between so I had a lot of time off work so I dedicated every single day to sort of just sitting down and um studying so managed okay. to finish it quite quickly okay that's cool yeah. so what qualification did you get from that so I only finished my level two and level three I never went on to do the am2 yeah um it that's was an option yeah but the thing is for for all the stuff that I do, you don't need the AM2. Yeah. Um, there was only one contract I've ever come across that wanted it. And that was a council contract outside of London that I didn't really want to work with anyways. So, um, yeah, I've never really had any issues not having have finished my AM2. Yeah. So uh, then I've got my pack testing as well. Um, my 18th edition, uh, testing and inspecting as well. Oh, that's cool. That yeah i think that's it there was a few other little extra small qualifications that came with it that were not sitting guilds they were like essential electrics by some sort of examination boards i've never really heard of just small extra things about the science principles behind it and stuff that i completed yeah okay that's cool so that's the different routes so the a couple of other um girls i spoke to have done um the apprenticeship um and i haven't mm. so you're the first person i speak to that's sort of done it the same way as me yeah um, how, how did you find the training then obviously you sounded like it was you know quite busy if you fitting it in around work and and whatever and how was like um did you actually have to go to college or was most of it like online and doing it from home um i went to college part-time so some of it was doing it at home, sending off the assignments, speaking to the um, teachers on the phone. Yeah. Um, and then every now and again, I'd have to come in to complete practical assessments and just sort of um, 
just basically had touched base with the teachers. So um, because of that, I had a choice of different colleges all around the UK. Oh, okay. Um, so I went to um, a college in Southampton. I went to one in Northampton. I went to one in Basildon. So I literally went all over the UK uh, to different colleges because I don't know. I don't know why I did that. I had the option to wait a few extra weeks um, and go to one near me, but I just decided to use that as an opportunity to travel as well. So yeah. I literally went around the whole of England to the different sites that they've got learning and yeah, every other, every, every couple of months oh, for a few good. weeks at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and so how, how did you find college overall? Like the, the pace of learning like that and the structure of the course and what you're learning, what, what, what mm. do you think of it? Do you rate it or? Um, for me personally, I think that was the best way that I could have learned um, because it was very flexible. Yeah. At the time I was working full time to pay obviously my bills and pay for the course. So I didn't have too much time um, to go to a college in the daytime. So where I only had to take a few weeks of work here and there, it fit perfectly around that as yeah. well. And being a young mum as well, I um, I managed to fit that around being a mother as well. Um, and the way it was structured as well, it was quite good because it was, um, it was kind of like a, crash course type of thing where they just let you go off learn it all by yourself and then when you come into college you basically just bombard them with all the questions you've got mm -hmm. they go through it and then you go off again into the real world working um and just applying the knowledge you've got if there was there any questions they will sort of sit you down explain um so i found that i found that quite good yeah it was quite good because very very flexible that's and good to hear. every single time I went to a different college as well, it would be new people and new teachers as well, which for me was quite good because every single teacher would explain it differently and each one would be better at certain things than the others. Yes. Some of the teachers were better at the practical. Some of the teachers were better at the theory. Some of the teachers were just better at explaining stuff altogether. So it's quite nice to have a different experience of so many different teachers. I've probably had about... 15 20 different teachers oh, wow. throughout my whole uh that, thing good. yeah but it's it's good to hear that um you know about different training routes because you know there's a big argument out there that um you know like an apprenticeship is the only way to go and i do think that apprenticeships mm -hmm. are excellent you know yeah um, I agree. sometimes they just don't work for some people yeah. i was in the same situation mm -hmm. i couldn't do it it didn't work for me i was a grown-up i was i was yeah 28 or 29 when I went back to college um mm. you know I had bills to pay I had to work yeah exactly. even doing it the way I did it 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 took like about two days a week two and a half days a week at college and then you've got to fit in your full-time working hours mm -hmm. around that and you know people say oh you've done it because it's the easy route it's really not the easy route you know it's a lot of work around mm. your actual job and doing the yeah coursework it's a lot harder time. as well to do it by yourself without all the yeah. classmates around you as well because you've got yeah. to be organized you've got no one on you every no. single you've day got to be motivated up. you've got it you've got you're, you're yeah, paying a lot of money like you are i spent about i think it was just over five thousand pounds for my for the two years yeah um and I mean that motivates you once you're spending that sort of money you, you're on it you, you're there because you want to learn um and I yeah think exactly is, you make of it what you know what you what you put into it really you get out don't you so yeah I think it's good to hear about you know different different uh options for training and stuff um and right I really want to talk about your work now because I what I obviously follow your Instagram and I watch your stories and you go to the craziest job what tell us your Instagram name for people that um want to follow you is it Kim um it, Kimmy the Sparks Kimmy the Sparks okay everyone needs mm -hmm. to follow Kimmy the Sparks um, so yeah I, I like to post Instagram stories rather than posts yeah because Instagram stories sort of just last 24 hours you don't have to put too much thought into it and it's just 
sort of live action of my day every yeah. day so and it's brilliant yeah <laughs> um, so you're based yeah, in honest, east london is that right um so i live in east london but my work is all over london and essex and sort of hertfordshire areas okay so yeah i cover quite a quite a wide range okay mm. and so who 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 do you actually work for you work for the so i've got um I work, I've got quite a few clients. Most of them are social housing and um, like council houses, housing associations, um, elderly people homes, that sort of, that that sort of thing. I do that about three days a week, four days a week. And then the rest of my time is um, sort of estate agent work and just private jobs. But I actually enjoy the social housing stuff a lot more. So I dedicate more time to that. And I do the out of hours as well for social housing again. So Yeah, um, I see that. You're working. Crazy stories. You're <laughs> mental. You're working at like just trotting around London with your little uh, handbag tool bag at bloody <laughs> two in the morning on your tod. You're crazy. Um, Quickly while we're on it, the handbag yeah. tool bag. Look, what, what's going on with that? Have you always used a handbag? Oh, you know what? I've actually got a little story that comes with that. Um, mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I've always used um, a handbag, except for when I first started, I used to use the case that my uh, screwdrivers came in. It was like a little plastic draper case, see-through thing. I used to use that for about six months or so. And then um, one day I was sort of having a wardrobe clearance and I thought, oh, this handbag is going to go in the bin. And I thought, wait a minute, that looks like the perfect size to just fit my screwdrivers I was like yeah I'll just reuse it instead of throwing it out pull my screwdrivers in perfect size amazing never had an issue with it and last year I actually got an employed job for uh, six seven months and on the job um it was never an issue until somebody filed a formal complaint against me for having a handbag as a tool bag what um it was a security guard for one of the places that I worked in. So he said, um, it looks very suspicious that she carries a handbag around it. Um, <laughs> so, 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 do you know, he actually, refer- he actually referred to it. He said she carries her makeup bag around with her. That's what he referred to it as. And um, I just thought, oh, you're actual. Okay, fine. So then they called me in for an official meeting and the, the manager said, listen, um, your tool bag is very, very unprofessional. You've got to get it changed into a proper tool bag. So I asked him, what is a proper tool bag? And he said, a proper one, not not this rubbish. So I said, okay, that's fine. Um, but I wasn't, I wasn't happy with that. I thought, wait, what's the proper tool bag? Something that a man designed that looks manly and is bulky. And yeah, I kind of said to him, um, if it's part of the uniform, you guys should provide me a tool bag and if it's not then I'll choose the design of the bag that I put my tools yeah, in too so right. so eventually because uh, the handbag was small and pink I thought you know what fine it is a little bit childish I'll just get a black handbag and just put my tools in that so I've got one of my other old handbags a black one put all the tools in um they still said that was very inappropriate <laughs> and I think it's okay I think it's perfect. It's very comfortable. It's not too heavy. I've tried picking up the other boys' tools, but I can't pick it up. It's like these big, heavy things I'm lifting and I'm like, oh my God, what have you even got in there? And yeah, it didn't make sense. So yeah, I've always kind of used the handbag. It does the job. If it suits But it does the job, yeah. That's it. That's all that matters. I love it. So yeah, I, I love it as well. I do sometimes get looks where they're like, where's your tool bag then? And I'm like, this thing, <laughs> it's got tools in it. It's a bag. So, and it's sort of like a little icebreaker conversation style when I go to jobs as well. People just love to have little chit chats and use yeah. my tool bag as one of them. Yeah. Talking points, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about um, some jobs then. I know you've got, mil- you must have millions of stories. Like, I want to know like your, your favourite job, like the best call out that you went to and the worst call out you went to has got to be loads oh. I've, re- I've seen so, the story I've seen the Instagram post <laughs> about the most disgusting one you went to that made you throw up oh yeah that one that one was that one was 
Yeah, that one was crazy. I couldn't get over that one for a few weeks. Every time I walked past the alleyway, I would just go, yeah. and I would just remember that job. It was, it was horrible. I think um, I've been to actually quite a lot of jobs that are quite as bad as that, but none of them made me throw up on the spot. That was the only one. But I've been to a lot of very, very filthy houses. Um, but obviously, you've got to bear in mind the tenants I work with, a lot of them are either mentally disabled or they've just been in prison for their whole lives so they've just come out so they're finding it hard to adapt so mm -hmm. obviously bearing that in mind you've got to understand that but sometimes when I do think about it I'm like wow like this was um last week I went to a job and the guy uses his floor as an ashtray when he lays in bed so the whole floor is just covered in ash and he just oh. lays in bed just tipping ash and God. and it was just it was horrible I'm not even going to mention what the toilet looked like because I didn't even understand what was on it I was gonna post the picture but I thought you know what it's not fair it might make somebody throw up so I never posted a picture on the stories um I just sent it to a few people directly that asked more about it um but yeah so I've had a lot of very like filthy jobs um I've had like the one with the mushrooms growing in the corner uh mushrooms growing in the cupboard and the woman said she's, she's smelling a very funny smell so she thought it's the electrics and I said to her you know not in a rude way, sweetheart. Your house is very clean, but do you not think it's the mushrooms growing all over the floor in the cupboard? And she was so embarrassed. She said oh. <laughs> she genuinely didn't see them, but I didn't know how to tell her. This oh was an emergency God. call out at 10 o'clock at night. So I just pointed them out to her. I said, if you just clean up the mushrooms, I'm sure the smell will go away. And she was so embarrassed. Like her face just went all red. And she's like, oh my God. <laughs> she said, I didn't see the mushrooms growing on the floor. And it's just, oh my God. It was crazy. Um, so yeah, I've had a lot of crazy jobs and that says oh another one as well it was um there was an actual um poo on the floor and i kind of trotted in it next <laughs> to the socket and it was apparently shoes on? it was one of the kids what's that did you have shoes on when you stood in it i did luckily i did and oh, it was just one of the kids apparently they just but the woman didn't see it and neither did i and she thought it was um chocolate but it wasn't <laughs> and um I did a job um, before Christmas. We were doing an EICR in a house and um, the uh, guy said, um, we've got a cat, but he's very nervous. So he'll be under the bed in the main bedroom. So he'll just stay there. Don't worry about him. I was like, yeah, okay, fine. Went in there. Um, I was taking some socket fronts off and I literally was like that far from standing in a huge pile of cat diarrhea. <laughs> And I'd taken my shoes off, so it was a nice house. So I only had my socks on. And I literally stepped next to it. And I was like, <gasps> oh, my God. Oh and I didn't tell the oh, I just left it. How bad's that? I didn't know whether to just to say. I, I just felt awkward saying, oh, there's a massive pile of cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought they'll find that when they go to bed. So I just, <laughs> <yeah>. awful. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, and I'm thinking of all the, all the other jobs I've had... Um, all the other crazy stories of um uh obviously being a woman coming into a house most of them would be out of hours ones where I sort of come in and obviously they're very surprised yeah. to see a woman so I've had the jobs you know where they open the door and they sort of look behind me and they're like is there anybody else coming and I'm just like no it's just me they're like oh just you by yourself doing this job and even today I sort of walked in and the guy said are you gonna fix it yourself like you're actually gonna do it I was like yeah he's like wow I've got to see this and um oh that reminds me of another job I had um this was like a private job I had it was an old man he approached me and he said um what is it that you do and I said I'm an electrician and he's like I can't believe this I never thought I'd see this in my life he was a yeah proper old man and um he said he needs his fuse box changed he said, would I be able to do it? And I said, yeah, of course. So he said, he'll pay me just to watch, with, like, to see if I do it or not, because he, wouldn't, he couldn't understand that woman was capable of doing a man's job where he's so old school. So he paid me and he literally just stood on the ladder. Uh, I mean, stood at the bottom of the ladder and just watched me change the fuse box in shock because um, he just never thought he'd see this in his lifetime. And Why? Yeah, so literally I just got the job just because he wanted to watch because he couldn't believe that this was possible. That was an interesting one. That's mad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what what, other, thing, what um, other things do you face? Like, be, you know, being a woman in, um, in, in 
the type of work that you do do you ever feel like scared going to jobs like I don't mean like obviously walking the streets of London <laughs> in the middle of the night yeah some of the places you go can be a bit scary but what about I do you, you know what once I had a very I did have a very very scary job once where I was genuinely scared this was um uh, another out of hours emergency probably about 10 o'clock at night uh, the tenants electrics were sparking basically they had a leak and it was leaking onto the main meter but for some reason the main fuse wasn't blowing so it was just just sparking uh, with the water splashing everywhere so when I attended the job I basically realized that um, um, I wanted to go and basically pull the main fuse out at that time I didn't know that we weren't supposed to be touching the main fuses so uh, bearing that in mind at the time I thought you know what, I'm gonna go pull the main fuse out so this was a huge tower block in East London that is very notorious for its crime rate and they've actually used it in a lot of films to yeah. record um, so anyways you've got to go all the way around the block uh, all the way downstairs into the basement um, they're called Robin Hood Gardens and they've actually knocked one of them down because it's that much of a bad estate so anyways I've went down into the basement now and um there's a guy in a suit and he's sort of sitting on the stairs scratching something and there's another guy next to him and they're sort of both scratching something and I realized they've got needles and they're like injecting themselves oh and I sort of froze and bear in mind this is a dark deep basement and I just sort of I was in shock I was like oh my god what do I do what do I say do I carry on going down to where the fuses are or not the guy just stood up with a needle and he's like who are you why are you spying us are you police and he started chasing me with the needle <gasps> And I just, oh I just started running. I didn't know what to do. I like, ah! And I ran, I ran out and um, he was chasing me. And then um, he was asking me if I'm like the BT woman and all this stuff. And I've got a situation now where her electrics are sparking. There's actual sparks coming off. There's a man chasing me with a needle with whatever he's injecting. And I'm just there. It's 10 o'clock at night. I'm crying. I don't know what to do. Oh um, so then... I called another Sparky that a new local for backup. He came and helped me to do the job. And then after that, I found out the next day that that block, um, every time they send somebody there, they're supposed to send two people. It's supposed to be a two man job. No one is supposed to go to that block by themselves. Mm -hmm. However, they forgot to mention that. And they sent me all alone. Oh my Small God. Small girl. So bad. At nine o'clock at night. So yeah, I've had situations like that, but what they do with social housing um, sort of contracts, they always, put it down for a two-man job right it just happens to be that this time they forgot to mention it so normally these kind of things they do uh bring another person just literally to walk beside you to make right. sure that you're safe and a lot of the houses as well with the tenants of violence or have known to you know try to kidnap people and stuff like that they get you to come with somebody else <laughs> just a normal day at work yeah. you're so casual yeah you know like the yeah. people that try and kidnap you and like you know murder yeah. you you're so casual um, <laughs> I'll be scared to death, I think. Oh my god, you're brave, yeah, you're so brave. Um, yeah, I'm just mm -hmm. <laughs> just a little bit. You must be a little bit crazy, like you, or you're just used to it just now, just a little bit. You just thought you just it must just be um, okay to you now. I think it's a bit of both, it's a bit of both. I think I love. I love exciting things. Um, I'm not one to live a very calm lifestyle. So I think I like the excitement of the job. Right. I love the crazy stories. I love telling stories. I love hearing stories. So I think this kind of job is perfect for me. Whereas um, I tried doing site work and it was like three days straight of the same thing. Yeah. And it was just not for me. Other people love it because they just want to have a nice day at work and go home. Yeah. For me... I love these crazy stories. The crazier, the better. <laughs> That's good. So someone's got to do it. If it's not me, it's going to be somebody that hates it. So it might as well be me that enjoys the the crazy aspects of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned earlier that you um, had a child. So for your training. Um, mm -hmm. So how do you, with all your crazy hours and everything, how do you juggle sort of life with your, is it, you've got a son, haven't you, a little boy? Yeah, how do you a son. So you juggle life with your son? Um, so yeah, when I first started out, I was mainly doing, I think I've done the out of hours for about two years. So I literally just done out of hours, meaning that 
for the whole day, I would spend it with him. And about six, seven o'clock at night, I'll put him to bed and then I'll go and do my night shift. And the out of hours, I'd normally finish them all by midnight, one o'clock. By the time I come home, it'll be two, three o'clock in the morning. I'll sleep, wake up at nine and then I'll spend the whole day with him again and put him to bed and go to work. So I was only really missing the times when he was sleeping. So I wasn't really missing out on him at all. And then only recently he started going to, this was last year, he started going to nursery. So then I could work in the daytimes, pick him up after work. Um, but at the moment I'm doing out of hours on the weekends. So then he just stays with his grandma and um, his dad has him part time as well. So um, that helps as well. Cause I've got half the time I can just dedicate it to working. So when I don't have him, that's why I work so much. Cause I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> no social life you know especially with this lockdown wow, um yeah. if i've got no yeah if i haven't got him there as well i've got not much else to do it sounds quite sad i know so just go out to work <laughs> that's what i've been doing to be fair like last year i've just i just worked as much as i could just because like you say that's all that's all there is to do like might as well make the most of, mm. uh, of the time so so it's good yeah. to hear that it's uh, possible to have, um, you know, like a family as well. Because I think that might put a lot of a lot of women off. Because yeah, I can't imagine. Like I saw photos of you, like heavily pregnant, still working. You worked right up until yeah. You- that you used that used to be quite fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you must get some mad, like crazy looks and stuff. Like yeah. I did because imagine I'm a woman. They're like, "Wow, you're doing this," and I turn around. Turn around. And I'm like, Wait, what? <laughs> this I remember this one woman. She's like, I genuinely can't comprehend it. And she's like, I'm just gonna leave the room because I, I just. She's like, this is way too much. Like a woman doing this is crazy. And then you've got this big belly. And she was saying when she was like three, four months pregnant, she was just sitting at home doing nothing. And then I'm out here, eight, eight months pregnant, eight and a half months ready to pop, still changing her sockets. And she. <laughs> she's like wow I feel it's like yeah changing sockets changing lights um I did try to stay off the ladder just because you never know and obviously try not to work live because you do think about it if you do get a shock it's not just you getting a shock it's yeah. also a little person that's not even here yet so it was quite interesting but yeah no way um so what are you what are your plans now? Are you are you happy with your work schedule as it is with your social housing and then your own like with your private work or do you think you'll carry on doing that? Yeah. For the thrill? Yeah. I was thinking that today I had like a little thing where I realized that I'm I enjoy the social housing work. So when I do it three times a week, that's perfect. But recently I've started doing it more often than that four days a week and this week I'm doing five so now it's gone from something I enjoy and I do part-time to being a full-time thing and now where it's full-time it's way too much so I'm starting to just sort of yeah I'm, I'm losing the interest so I'm just planning to sort of go back to only doing it two three days a week from next week mm-hmm. um it is a bit much doing it every day um cause sometimes you know I go on Instagram and I look at all these sparkies putting their pretty work up and it's nice and clean and tidy and nice chandeliers and I'm just there with all my greasy plugs and just oh I just want to do something nice for once. <laughs> everything everything does look grim to be fair on all your jobs all the lights <laughs> all the lights that are filled with grim brown water <laughs> and greasy plugs I know stuff. it's all like oh god that's so yeah so i think from next week i I just want to do at least one day a week where it's nice pretty clean work where i can just sort of do something nice and just be proud of it rather than just oh my god look at how crazy this was yeah (laughs) i think it's the variety so yeah that's sort of the the goals so i want to i think that's what i need i need more variety now yeah that's that's what i'm like like now because i do my three days a week um where I'm employed with a, with a company and then the rest of the time I either do my own private work or I've been subbing to different uh, companies that I've met on uh, th- mainly through Instagram um mm. you know like since I joined Instagram loads of new opportunities have opened up and it's been amazing like I've I was just um talking to uh Sam mm. and Mark earlier about um today I've done a load of smart home stuff with um 
Synergy Smart Homes in Nottingham and it was absolutely brilliant. I've learned so much and yeah, I'm going to have a little have a little look into that a bit more because it was really interesting. And I think I'm like you. I need variety. I need to be doing yeah stuff with different people. It keeps it interesting, doesn't it? Yeah, that's interesting. You do the same as me. Three days a week, I do yeah. that. Just sort of um, working with one company, and then the rest is all yeah mix and match of everything else. That's quite interesting, right? It's yeah, because you sort of feel like you have um, even though you're working, it's like you've you've got yeah. as well because yeah that's that's exactly why I love it I need that I, I, I like the routine yep. having my three days knowing that I'm going yeah, to yeah me too but not too much routine yeah and then the other days mm. like you've got, you've, you can be flexible you've got free you can like build your own schedule that's what I like I can do what I want when I want um I'm still working all the time but you know on my own terms yeah it's quite nice having, having yeah systems. so yeah I'm lucky that um yeah. I've got I've got that option like you so yeah what's um tell us about some good jobs like t we've heard about the um scary ones and the disgusting ones so what, good what's, jobs. what's been your um, favorite you know have you ever had any call outs where it's just been i don't know something good oh nice i actually really do um on a regular basis i feel like it's literally 50 50 mm -hmm. um but the good ones for me the, the best call out are the ones where i get to sort of speak and interact with the tenants um because I'm like a people's person I love talking and listening um so when I go into a tenant's house I like to snoop at their bookshelves I do ask for permission most of the time I go oh excuse me do you mind if I take a look at your bookshelves mm -hmm. and then I sort of have a look at what books they have and then bring up a conversation about what you know what they've got on there and then sometimes the tenants will just sort of um there was like this one lady she was this was um last year and this was during the the corona times and she was she hadn't seen anybody in real life for i think about three months and i was the first person she saw i was doing her bathroom light and she was in the next few rooms down but she had a door open and then i noticed some of her books and i asked her about it it was books about cornwall so then she started telling me how she lived in cornwall for 20 years when she was younger and she used to go exploring all these natural caves and she's into all this mystical spiritual stuff and i said to her, oh my god that's been my dream to go Cornwall and explore the mystical sites. And then she just started opening up about um, more and more of what she's into. And she was showing me all her tattoos she got when she was younger. This is an um, old lady now. She's sort of like showing me her little yeah. wrinkled arms. And I was like, oh, this is cute. And, um, and then she told me she works with some of these people that I, I've read their books. And she said she was quite good friends with them. And she's got some more of their books. And um, she then gave me her number and she said, call me, I'll tell you more of the tourist sites to visit. And then she gave me some of the books to take away. And I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And I've had so many jobs like that. Even today, I went into a guy's house and he was like burning incense. And I was like, oh, I like this incense. And um, I noticed he had a lot of books and stuff about the kind of stuff I'm researching at the moment. And then we ended up having like a really nice conversation. Um, and yeah, I've had a lot of jobs like that where, it's normally to do with books. I guess I really like books. Um, where there was this other guy as well. He was an um, author. And he, at the end of the job, he said, because I took my time and done it properly, he said, I'll let you pick any book you want off the shelf. Any one you want, oh pick God. it, and it's yours. I was like, oh, my God. And I was, like, running up and down trying to pick which one. And in the end, he gave me two, actually. Um, so, yeah, that's most of my best stories involve tenants having a good chat about what they're into and it magically happens to be the same stuff I'm into and at the end of it they give me books or this other lady she gave me incense and these little wax melts and Aww. yeah That's so I, lo I love these kind of jobs yeah it's, it's quite interesting because obviously working for the council you have in a block of flats you have the same layout for all of the flats on the floors mm -hmm. and then sometimes you go to a flat on the ground floor and it'll be like really dirty they're smoking doors everything's yellow and just they haven't hoovered for years and it just stinks and then you'll go a few floors up exactly the same layout but they've done it differently and they've actually looked after their house mm -hmm. so it's just nice clean you know they've they've done it up they put wallpaper up and you know it's, it's very clean and you just see like the difference with the same house and the same layout mm -hmm exactly the same but just a different person looking after it so you get to see the different sides to it as well so yeah it's quite it's quite good yeah you must have seen um 
uh, lately with um since uh, covid and stuff you must be going into a lot of people that have not seen anybody for a long time yeah I found that yeah mostly in the old people's homes some of them i genuinely nearly cried this lady she she hadn't seen anybody in real life for literally since the start of last year in march and this was two months ago so a, a whole year she hadn't seen anybody in real life and i was the first person she gets all her groceries delivered um she doesn't leave the house um I don't know how it's she sad, lives and it? it's so sad and she was so excited people. to see me she was she mm. was just you could just see she was showing me her little plants and everything and she's like I know you've got to go and and at first she was quite scared she was in the other room and then the more we spoke the more she just sort of sat down and relaxed and she just yeah it's quite sad it's quite sad because yeah there's so many it's, isolated it's, people aren't there I mean there's lots of people especially yeah. probably the people a lot of people that you go to see that might be sort of isolated anyway but at, at the minute mm -hmm. so many people stuck at home on their own and yeah yeah because they're normally at least that you know their grandkids come to visit at least for christmas yeah that's the one thing they look forward to for the whole year and this year they didn't get to see any of their family they can't even leave and um yeah um yeah. it's mad the people you meet though isn't it like <laughs> Mm. Like the people that you'd never sort of meet or have the chance to talk to otherwise like yeah I went on this job um that was a few weeks before Christmas or a bit more um and the guy was a oh what's it called Ta taxidermist taxidermist mm -hmm. for animals oh I thought that was something to do with taxis <laughs> I'm sure it's called a taxidermist, but he, he basically takes animals and like skins, like guts them and stuffs them. But they're like proper works of art. They're like, they look real. They're amazing. Um, and he was brilliant. Like we were there all day doing um, uh, different bits on, in the house and then uh, the, all the testing and stuff. And um, he spent so much time, like he followed us about, like chatting with us and telling us Aww. all about his career doing this. And he was so interested and, he was so lovely. And then at the end of the day, um, he took us down to his, he's got like a, a little outbuilding thing where he does it all and showed it like, cause I was so interested in it oh. and the guy I was working with just cause I'd never really thought about it. I didn't think I'd be interested in it, but when he was telling me the process <laughs> and stuff and um, it wasn't, it's not, it's not what, you know, I originally thought, you know, he gets people with like really, um, you know, like loved pets that have passed away that they can't bear oh. to part with. But they take them, they oh. freeze them take them to him and he um you know stuffs them so they can keep them forever and it's I used to think it was quite like weird and stuff but he told me a few stories about you know animals that he's done I thought oh, it's you know if that's your way of dealing with it it's 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 quite yeah. nice so um yeah he took us down to this building and showed us he's, he had different um animals at, at different stages of the process and it was so oh. interesting we spent ages chatting with him and <laughs> It was just, I just thought if I hadn't have come here to do this work, I never would have met you. I never would have got this chance. And it's just yeah, mad exactly. that you meet, go, you know, going around different areas and different people's houses and stuff. And, mm. Yeah. And that's the thing. You can have like the most interesting conversation with them and then you'll never see them again. Yeah. So it's just like, yes, yeah, I find that so interesting. You literally just have a proper heart to heart open yeah. up and you just, thanks for um, the cup of tea your light is fixed yeah see you maybe never <laughs> <laughs> probably never no um so have you got any um advice for you know like the next generation young females that are thinking about getting into a trade and you know there's different things that might put them off have you got any advice for for young youngsters hmm things that might put you off um I think with the trade, because it's so flexible and there are so many different sectors within the trade, mm -hmm. and then once you go within the, each different sector, you have so many different ways to be um, working, such as employed, self-employed, or like 50-50, like yourself. Um, and within that, you have so many different employers as well, and each employer deals with things differently. So if you feel like you can't be independent because you're not organised, and that's your worry and that's putting you off, you always have the route of being employed by a company that provide uh, lots of benefits and stuff like that. 
or if that is the one thing that's putting you off being employed and having no freedom you can go the opposite route which is a self-employed route you've got more freedom subcontracting so in terms of being put off by these kind of things where there's so much choice i'd say don't worry about it because you can try the different uh ways of doing it yeah eventually you'll find a thing that suits the most um as well in terms of not knowing as well so sometimes when you don't know um when you don't know how to do things it's okay because i've realized there's a lot of people who've been doing it for 10 years 20 years even some of those guys still don't know they're still learning on the job up to this day because it's always updating new things coming out and then sometimes you'll just have like a crazy thing that no one's ever seen happen before yeah. so that kind of thing um as well might put somebody off you know not knowing and feeling overwhelmed because it is um a very in-depth thing of um i'm losing my words now um it might be overwhelming because there is so much to know but then the sparky community a lot of us are very nice and yeah. very helpful yeah. and then if you are working in a company you can just give somebody a call they're more than welcome you know the, they'll help you out and and stuff like that um so as well if that's putting you off don't worry about it there's always support. Nice. there's so much support out there yeah there's always everywhere. support yeah um and um what other things might put people off um the I think training I as think, well I think the training and the, the college side of things like um being the only girl at college I think I think that puts a lot of young girls off you know like because what's that you know oh, being the only girl yeah because you sometimes you come out of school you not, might not be that confident and to think oh I can't go into a classroom mm -hmm. with 20 lads like and you know college mm -hmm. once you're at college everything's a bit wild isn't it it's not yeah. like school where they have control of you <laughs> they're all you know the lads are a bit crazy it's true so, yeah 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 I think that could put um mm -hmm. put a lot of girls off but I don't know I think some, that that's just some youngsters now that you meet though they've got more confidence than me they're just like mm. it's, good, it's good to say I think with that one it's more of a thing um you just just if you want to do it you're gonna to have to go for it because it is a male dominated industry so whether you're the only girl um in the classroom you will most likely be the only girl in the company if not one of the only two girls at the company so I think it's more, if that is putting you off, you just kind of have to flip the viewpoints and see it as the first step of being the only woman in the classroom. It's quite small. You know everybody. You'll get to know them after a while. Mm -hmm. The next step will be you being the only woman in the workplace. I think it's not something you can escape. It's just more like a stepping stone. Yeah, just dealing with it. World out there. You just, yeah. yeah, I think it's just something you, you'll learn to deal with eventually yeah. <laughs> well thank you so much you have been amazing thanks for sharing all your crazy stories with us um thank you yeah. we only got through about a quarter of them so i know <laughs> i was gonna say i need you to come back because there's so much when you do um series when you do series two i was just looking at my little list i'd even share the building site stories and this and that and um, oh god i want to hear it all so you definitely need to uh, you, know? <laughs> you need to have another chat because so, yeah, yeah when you're doing um series two yeah give me give me a call and um awesome <laughs> i will and what was, what was your instagram again kim kimmy the sparks yeah yeah give me the sparks everybody follow give me the sparks <laughs> keeping us entertained every day right i'll let you go thanks so oh. much take care bye thanks bye that was women in trades with amy the sparky never miss an episode by subscribing now just hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on